Welcome back. Today we're looking at S-134, poisoning and overdose. We'll start off by ensuring a patent airway, O2 saturation as needed, O2 and or ventilate as needed, carboxy hemoglobin monitor, PRN or as needed, if available. Ingestions, identify the substance. Skin, remove clothes. Brush off dry chemicals, flush with copious amounts of water. Toxic inhalation, move patient to a safe environment. 100% O2 via mask. Consider transport to a facility with hyperbaric chamber for suspected carbon monoxide poisoning for unconscious or pregnant patient. Symptomatic suspected opioid overdose with respiratory rate of less than 12. And they advise to use caution in opioid dependent pain management patients. We can use a naloxone nasal spray, four milligrams in a preloaded single dose device. And we administer the full dose in one nostril or more commonly, we'll have naloxone to assemble in a two milligram syringe with an atomizer. We'll administer one milligram into each nostril. Contamination with commercial grade, low level radioactive material. Patients with mild injuries may be decontaminated, removal of contaminated clothing, brushing off material prior to treatment and transport. Decontamination proceedings shall not delay treatment and transport of patients with significant or life-threatening injuries. Treatment of significant injuries is always the priority. Notes for scene safety. Consider hazmat activation as needed in symptomatic suspected opioid overdose, excluding opioid pain management dependent patients, administer naloxone, IN, IM prior to IV. For us, we only administer naloxone IN, intranasal. Paramedics administer IM, intramuscular, and IV, intravenous. Naloxone EMTs do not. EMTs not trained in naloxone IN administration may assist family or friend to medicate with patients prescribed naloxone in symptomatic. Very important that you know what a symptomatic suspected opioid overdose looks like. Pinpoint pupils, pale, cool skin signs, depressed respiratory drive. Note, EMTs are authorized to administer one dose of naloxone. If a patient refuses transport or if additional doses are required, initiate 911. Another way of saying activate ALS. Again, those ALS level providers, paramedics, they can do a lot more than we can. They can give the medication in different routes and we just don't want this patient to AMA or refuse transport without being seen by an ALS provider. Now per Title 22, Chapter 1.5, Section 100019, public safety personnel may administer intranasal naloxone when authorized by the county of San Diego EMS medical director. So through Miramar College, you actually get training on how to administer naloxone IN, and that will be stated on your course completion certificate when you affiliate with the county. So that is a skill that you can perform within your scope of practice. However, that's the only route that an EMT may give naloxone. An EMT may not give naloxone IM or IV. We may only do it IN, intranasal, all right? So this is a really good one to know, poisoning and overdose, especially the overdoses. We see quite a few of those. So be familiar with this protocol. Also, these are medications you'll have on your ambulance. So you need to be familiar with what you have. If you have the four milligram, if you have the two milligram, you need to know how to give each one and the protocol that falls back to. All right, so this was S134, poisoning and overdose. A lot to learn in this one. Make sure you guys spend some time studying it. We'll see you on the next one.